Lucy and welcome to Saturday Club. I hope that you've had a good week. I wonder if you've had some snow. I know that there's been snow in a lot of places. I had snow but I only had a tiny tiny bit of snow just on the pavements. There wasn't enough for me to make a snowman or do anything with so it's just been very very cold here but I haven't had the snow. But I wonder if you've had snow and I hope if you have had snow that you had great fun going out in the snow and playing in the snow and maybe you got to build a snowman. I, I was a bit disappointed that we didn't have more snow here. It would have been nice to have a bit more snow because it was so cold I really wanted it to snow but we haven't had any snow but it's, it's still really cold here. I don't know if it's cold where you are but uh, it's very cold where I am so I hope that you're all wrapping up warm and looking after yourselves. Um, although I know some of you who watch in Australia it's your summer so you're probably sitting there thinking snow? Cold? What are you talking about Victoria? But I know that for people who are in Europe and England then it is very cold at the moment. And I wonder what you've been up to this week. I've been busy with my crochet. I've carried on working on, on my little crochet and I, I expect you can guess now it's going to be Mickey Mouse. And uh, this week I made his shorts. So I crocheted his shorts and his buttons and then I crocheted the head to the body. So uh, he, now all he needs are some arms and he needs some shoes and he needs some gloves on the end of his arms. So I, 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 oh, and he needs some eyes and a tail. So he's got a fair few things to do, but I've, I'm very pleased. I've never crocheted a pair of shorts before, so I'm very pleased that I've made some lovely crocheted shorts for Mickey Mouse to wear. And I think they look really smart. Um, but I'm not going to crochet a grown-up pair for me to wear. I think that would be too much work. But, uh, but they look very smart on Mickey, so I'm, getting, I'm very pleased with how my little Mickey Mouse is coming along. And uh, I've been doing some drawing in my art group that I ran. And this week we were looking at famous paintings. So we looked at a famous painting and then we said, OK, I'm going to draw ourselves in the famous painting. So I drew myself in two famous paintings and then I turned it into a modern painting. So one of them I put my computer in and things like that. It was a very old painting, but I made it a modern painting of me at my desk. And the other one, I, drew, I found a picture of someone walking along the beach holding a parasol and I turned it into a picture of me walking in the fields with my wellies covered in mud and the wind and the rain blowing so I had great fun drawing those pictures and I've got my flowers I forgot to buy any more flowers yesterday but they look okay so I think I think my flowers will be okay for another couple of days I do like having a nice bunch of flowers in my living room um, but I've got a plant that's dying because I keep on forgetting to water it. So I, I really need to, um, to give it some water soon, otherwise it really is going to die. Um, I'm not very good at keeping plants alive. Um, I've got another plant that's dead upstairs that I forgot to water. So yeah, I'm not very good with plants. Now I know that some of you have been doing the craft from last week. And this one is Joffiel's that his mum sent to me just this morning. And this is his poster from last week. Now, you, I, if I hold it really close, I think you can see that what Joffio's done is on the wood, he's drawn lines to make it look like what we call the grain of the wood. You know, the little lines that you get in wood. He's drawn the grain of the wood. And I think he might have used a metallic marker to do that because it looks gold and silver to me. And then he's done on the writing... He's coloured in the lettering and then you can see it really clearly on the A. He's gone up, written in each letter, the letter inside, with gold and silver markers. So I really like that, Joffio. Well done. Um, and then this one is Kate's, Joffio's little sister. And uh, she's getting really good at her colouring too. And I think, hmm, I'm not sure that she got to use the gold and silver markers, but she's done really good colouring. And what I like is she's done every letter a different colour which is really good. She hasn't just got one colour and gone, I ain't got a colour in them all the same. She's done every letter a different colour, so well done, Kate. And that was all the pictures that I had this week. I didn't have pictures from anyone else, but uh, if, you do do, if you do want to send me pictures of what... If you do want your mums or dads to send me pictures of what you've done, you can send me a message on Facebook, or if you're someone that I email, you can always email me the, uh, the pictures and the crafts that you have done, and uh, it's really nice to see them. 
Now, before I forget, we won't have Saturday Club next week. I'm taking a week's holiday. So next week there will be no Saturday Club, but I've emailed the mums and dads some activities that you can do um, during the week if you want to, to help you remember all of the things that we've been learning about what Jesus said. And I wonder who's watching today. I need to say hello to some people. So I need to say hello to Josiah and Reuben and Joel from my church. And I say hello to you boys. I know you don't watch until Sunday afternoon. So hello. And I'll say now that it was nice to see you on Sunday morning, <laughs> which is a bit confusing. And hello to your cousins, Brandon and Jaden and Layla. And hello, Abby. And then in London, hello, Isaac and Daniel and Luke and Noah. How are you, boys? And also Finley and Bethany. Hello, Finley and Bethany. How are you? And then in Switzerland, oh, all of these people in Switzerland. We have Michaela and Matthias. Hello, Michaela. Hello, Matthias. And Jamie and Ellen, Emily. Hello, girls. And Jessie and Lena. Hello to you too. And then we have Nina. Hello, Nina. And then we have Irina and Sonia. Hello, Irina. Hello, Sonia. And in Indonesia, Irina and Sonia's cousin, Michelle. Hello, Michelle. And then in Luxembourg. Hello, Joffiel. Hello, Kate. And then in France. Bonjour, Luc. Bonjour, Julia. Comment ça va? And then also in France, I need to say hello, say hello to some new people who I think are watching this morning. Hello, Louise. Hello, Leonard. I don't know whether you speak English or French, so I'll talk to you in French as well. Bonjour, Louise. Bonjour, Leonard. Comment ça va? Enchanté. And then all the way in Australia. Hello, Ryan. Need to shout and it's summer in Australia. I wonder if you've gone to the beach today, Ryan. And then in India, India. hello, Paul. And hello, Prasnin in India. People from all over the world who watch Saturday Club. Isn't that wonderful? And all of these people watch Saturday Club because they want to learn more about Jesus and because they want to learn more about the Bible and about God. And that's a wonderful thing. And I know that there are other people who watch as well. And if you want me to say hello to you, send me a message and next week I'll say hello to you too. So, it's wonderful to have you all watching Saturday Club today. And uh, I don't know how many people are watching now and I know some people watch it later on. But it's really good to see people watching Saturday Club. And uh, what else can I tell you? I'm doing some cooking on Monday. I'm cooking a recipe. I saw a book in a recipe I thought... Oh, this is easy. It's just cauliflowers and cheese. Well, do you know, I had to buy two kinds of cheese and a cauliflower and a tub of creme fraiche and some special ham. And now, whenever I open my fridge, it smells like very smelly cheese. Um, and I keep on thinking, oh, my fridge doesn't smell very good. And then I remember it's a special cheese I bought. So uh, that's what I, I went shopping yesterday after I'd finished work. And, uh, oh... And I need to get something out of the fridge that we need for Saturday Club. Oh, I'm glad I mentioned my fridge. I'm hiding it so you can't see what it is yet, but there was something in the fridge that we need for Saturday Club later on. I'm glad I remembered that. Yes. Oh, it had to go shopping last night to buy it specially so that it was ready for Saturday Club this morning. I wonder what it might be. I wonder if you've got some of these too, because I did say to some of the mums and dads that they might want to have some of these ready. So I wonder whether you've got some of these ready as well. But uh, if not, don't worry. Maybe you can get some in the week and think about them. Think about what we learned in Saturday Club. So, it's nearly, oh, it is now half past nine. So hello to anyone who's just joined and it's time to start and we're going to start off by praying. So let's put our hands together, close our eyes and let's pray. Dear God, thank you for keeping us safe in another week. Thank you that you are always with us. Thank you for Saturday Club and the things that we learn about you. Please be with us today in Jesus name. Amen hope that when we have our Saturday Club that you say a nice big loud Amen to say that you agree with what we're praying. Now we're going to start off by singing 
and we're going to sing my god is so big my god is so big Are you ready my god is so big so strong and so mighty there's nothing my god cannot do my god is so big so strong and so mighty there's nothing my god cannot do the rivers are his the mountains are his the stars are his handiwork too my god is so big so strong and so mighty there's nothing my god cannot do and do you remember what that word handiwork means it means that God made everything. The Bible says that even the stars, all of those stars you see at the sky night, are just like the work of God's fingers. And that means that for God it was so easy to make them because God is so powerful. He made all of the world just by speaking. Now we're going to learn our memory verse. And we've been learning these memory verses about all of these things that Jesus said about himself. And do you remember... We've been learning that Jesus is the bread of life and the light of the world and the good shepherd and the resurrection and the life and the way, the truth and the life. And our memory verse today, we're going to be learning about how Jesus is the true vine. But let's see if you can remember all of the actions so far. So our memory verse, the first week's memory verse was Jesus said, I am the bread of life and then the next week we learnt that Jesus said I am the light of the world and then we learnt that Jesus said I am the good shepherd and then we learnt that Jesus said I am the resurrection and the life and then last week we learnt that Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. Now this week, our memory verse is something else that Jesus said. And Jesus said, I am the vine, ye are the branches. I am the vine, that's a plant that grapes grow on. And ye are the branches of the vine. And there's a bunch of grapes to remind us what Jesus was talking about. So we've got some actions. Jesus said, we're going to point up to heaven to remind ourselves that this is Jesus speaking. I am. And then for vine, you're going to hold one arm like this and grow a vine up the other arm. I am the vine. Ye are. And I'm going to point to you and you can point to me. The branches. Stick out your little finger and twirl a long branch along. Should we do the actions all together? Jesus said, I am the vine, ye are the branches. And again, it's quite a complicated memory verse this time. Jesus said, I am the vine, ye are the branches. Now this time, I'm going to do the actions and I want you to see if you can do the words. You ready? Very good. Now this time I'm going to say the words and you can do the actions. Jesus said, I am the vine, ye are the branches. Right, now... I bet you're wondering what I went to get out of my fridge. Well, there's been a clue in our memory verse. I need to open it. I went to get, oh, that won't do. Here we go. A bunch of grapes. A lovely ripe bunch of grapes. Oh, and they're really cold because they've been in the fridge. I'm going to have one. Mm. Oh, they're really juicy. I've got a lovely juicy bunch of grapes here. Now, grapes grow on plants called vines. And vines, they're not, they're not a tree and they're not quite a bush either. 
they 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 are very they've got very trunks that are the trunks of the vine are really really bumpy and lumpy and they grow quite close to the ground and then they spread out with all of these branches can you see quite thin branches and the grapes grow down from the branches and if you live in a country where they grow vines now i used to live in switzerland and they have a lot of vineyards in switzerland they need lots of care and vines like to be planted on a slope and they like to be planted on a slope that faces the sun and then you need to plant a vine you so you have a young vine and you plant it in the ground and then all of the branches they like to wrap around wires to hold them up and then they grow in the sun and they need lots of care a farmer will, a, a farmer will need to go along a vineyard keeper will need to go along the vines and the, vi the parts of the vine some of the branches that maybe aren't very strong or aren't growing many grapes he'll cut off and then the branches that are left will get really strong and the sunnier it is the better the grapes are and they like water but not too much water so vi vin vines need a, re a lot of care it's really hard work looking after a vineyard and when it's time to pick the grapes because grapes are so delicate it has to be done by hand they can't use machines so they have to walk along the vines and cut the grapes off and uh, and put them carefully down oh it's very hard work looking after a vineyard and in our memory verse Jesus said that he was like the vine Jesus said that he was like the vine and that we're like the branches and we're going to be thinking about that in our story today in our lesson today now we're going to start off by singing the song that we've been learning about that one of those sayings of Jesus I am the way the truth and the life you ready I am the way the truth and the life that's what Jesus said I am the way the truth and the life that's what Jesus said without the way there is no going without the truth there is no knowing without the life there is no living I am the way the truth and the life that's what Jesus said I always get muddled up in that song don't I I really ought to print out the words and have them in front of me I always get muddled up but I hope you've enjoyed learning it and it's really important to remember that Jesus is the only way that we can get to heaven and that he is the truth who tells us the truth about God and about ourselves and that he gives us new life now in Saturday Club all of our stories come from the Bible and I wonder if you can remember how many books there are in the Bible? Here's my poster. How many books are there in the Bible? There are a lot, aren't there? There are 66 books in the Bible, but they tell one big story, the story of God's plan to send Jesus. And today's story comes from the New Testament and the book of John. And John is one of one, two, three, four books in the Bible that tell us about the things that Jesus did when he was alive and I'm going to read part of what we're going to be thinking about to you now so I'm going to open my Bible and I'm going to find John chapter 15 and I'm going to find verse 3 now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me ye can do nothing now we're learning about some things that Jesus said about himself when he was alive and these sayings teach us about Jesus about what he came to do 
and what we need to do to have our sins forgiven. And last week we learnt that Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. He is the only way that we can get to heaven. He tells us the truth about ourselves and about God. And Jesus gives us new life and will take us to be with him in heaven when we die. And today we're going to learn about another thing that Jesus said and it's the last thing that he said. I am the vine, ye are the branches. I am the vine, ye are the branches. Now, when a gardener or farmer, they sow seeds or they plant a young, young plant, what do they hope will happen? They hope that those seeds are going to grow and are going to make fruit, crops that they can harvest and then sell and that we can eat for food. And they will look after the plants, the young plants, and they will care for them and they will water them and they will clear away the weeds and they will give them food and make sure that they get sunshine and fertiliser all so that they grow and produce fruit. And it was the same when Jesus was alive. They would plant seeds or young plants and they would watch them grow. Now some people grew grapes. So they would take a young vine, not a great big thick grown up one like this one, but a young vine and plant it in the ground and take care of it and then wait for it to produce grapes. And it takes a long time for a young vine to grow strong enough and big enough to make grapes. But the farmers would keep on looking after it. And then if they did their job well and they cared for it, the vine would grow up into a sturdy vine bush and it would produce beautiful grapes. And Jesus talked about vines and branches and grapes and he used it as a picture to explain something very important to his disciples. And Jesus was explaining that Jesus is like a vine bush and that God, Jesus' father God, is like the gardener or farmer who takes care of the vine bush. Now Jesus said at the very start when he was talking to his disciples that he was the true vine because Jesus is the true son of God. So Jesus is like the true vine and God his father is like the gardener. Okay, now what about us? If Jesus is the vine and God his father is like the gardener, what are we like? Well, Jesus said that the people who love him are like the branches attached to the vine. Now I'm going to bring this picture closer so that you can see the really thin branches going off there. That was what Jesus said in our memory verse. I am the vine, ye are the branches. And Jesus said that people like his disciples, people who follow Jesus and who love him and who have asked him to forgive them for their sins and the wrong things that they have done, people who believe that Jesus died on the cross for them are like the branches. They are joined up to Jesus. How wonderful. And when we listen to what God says in the Bible, it shows us how we should live by doing things that please him. And Jesus wants us to stay close to him every day. How do you think we can do that? Well, you're doing one of those things right now. You've come to Saturday Club. You're learning about Jesus. You're learning about what God has said in the Bible. So you're staying close to Jesus. And that is one way that we can stay close to Jesus every day and be joined up to him by reading the Bible, by coming to things like Saturday Club or Sunday School, and also by doing what this girl in the picture is doing, by praying and talking to Jesus in prayer. And those are all ways that we can stay close to Jesus. And Jesus wants people who love him to stick close to him like the branches need to stick close to the vine. If you look at our picture, there's a branch on the ground. 
Is it growing? No. Has it produced lovely bunches of grapes? No, because it isn't stuck close to the vine anymore. It's not attached to the vine. So we need to stick close to him. And to, but one of the ways, some of the ways that we can stick close to Jesus are by reading the Bible, praying, coming to Sunday school and Saturday club, and by asking Jesus to help us to stick close to him. Now, Jesus told his disciples that if they stayed close to him, then they would be able to do good things for God. Jesus said that they would be like the branches of a vine bush, which produce fruit. And a vine bush is best when it produces lovely big bunches of grapes. Then there, so if we stick close to God, Jesus said to his disciples, then our lives will be useful to God. Just like a vine branch is useful to the farmer when it produces a lovely big bunch of grapes. So the Bible talks about this a lot. The Bible says that when we do good things for God, when we do things that please God, we are producing fruit. So I wonder... What sort of fruit or good things do we do if we stay close to Jesus? Well, there are lots of things that we can do. God will help us to love other people and to be kind, to be calm and patient, even when things aren't going our way. He will make us able to tell other people about Jesus at home or at school or when we're grown up. And to be helpful, there are all sorts of things that you can do, even when you're little, by helping your mum and dad, by being obedient and doing what they tell you to do, when they tell you to do it. And when you go to church or chapel, by trying to sit quietly and listen, not by being noisy. Um, those are all things that we can do that are good fruit for God. And these things show that we are a follower of Jesus. And Jesus said that the way that people know that we follow him is by the things that we do. So when we live lives that please God, when we live lives that show that we are obedient to God, and when we are kind and patient and helpful and good and obedient, these things are like our fruit. Just like the vine branches have fruit with the grapes, so those things are like our fruit that show that we are following God. And if we follow Jesus, we need to stay joined up to him so that we can live useful lives for God. And the wonderful thing is that God will help us do this. The more we stay joined up to Jesus, the more we stay close to him by reading the Bible and praying and going to Sunday school, the more God will help us stay even closer and even more joined up to Jesus. And if you are a follower of Jesus, you should want to be useful to God and to please God in the way that you live. Now, remember this vine branch that was on the floor, on the ground? Some followers of Jesus forget to stay close to him and they don't live useful lives for God. But those who stay close to Jesus show that they love God and show other people a little bit of what God is like by the way that they live. And what happens is that people say, look at that person who's a follower of Jesus. Aren't they kind? Their God must be kind. Look at that person who is a follower of Jesus. Aren't they good? Their God must be good. And that makes people say, their God is good and kind and wonderful and he helps his people to do good things. So people look at our lives and it's like a lovely shiny mirror, but instead of seeing themselves, people see God. So it's a wonderful thing to be a follower of Jesus, living a good and useful life for God. And that might help other people want to follow Jesus too. So it's a way that we can show other people how wonderful it is to be a follower of Jesus. And we pray that that makes people want to 
follow Jesus too. So we're going to pray now and we're going to ask God to help us be joined up to Jesus and stay close to him and live useful lives to him. So let's put our hands together and close our eyes. Dear God, thank you for Jesus. Thank you that he is like the vine. Thank you that he looks after us and helps us. Help us to stay close to Jesus. Help us to stay joined up to him, to be a follower of Jesus and to live good and useful lives for you. Amen. Right, now, I hope you've got some craftings to do and if you haven't got them, you can go onto the website or I can email, you can send me a message on Facebook and I'll email them to you. And one of the things to do is there is a lovely bunch of grapes to colour in, a really big bunch of grapes, a lovely plump grapes. But this just isn't any bunch of grapes. It's a puzzle because on the next sheet there are some of the grapes and they've got our memory verse on. And you need to cut out the grapes and find where they belong on the big bunch of grapes. Now I'm not going to do it all because that would give you all the answers, but I'm going to cut out the first three grapes that say, I am the. So I'm going to carefully cut them out. And if you're not very good at cutting out or if you need some help, remember to ask a grown up to help you do the cutting out. All the way around. There we are, I've got three grapes here. So, hmm, where does it go? Does it go there? No, and the writing would be upside down. What about there in the middle? No, hang on a second. That's where it goes, it goes there. Right, so I'm going to glue it down. Carefully in the right spot. There we go. So now on my bunch of grapes it says, I am the. And then I've got other grapes with the rest of the memory verse on that I can cut out and stick down later. So that's something for you to do. And you could do green grapes or purple grapes. Um, don't know whether you can get grapes in any other colour. But uh, I suppose if you want to do the grapes in another colour, you can. And then if you're older, there's also a puzzle sheet, for, a worksheet for you to do. And we've got a crossword. So it says, what can you remember from Saturday Club? Can you fill out the crossword puzzle? And there are some clues and you need to fill them in the right one. So the first one, number one, says we need to say, stay something to Jesus. And it's got one, two, three, four, five letters. And I'll give you a clue. The first one is close. So I'm going to get my pen and I'm going to write close in number one going down. And I'm going to write it in the answer as well so that, so that the sentence makes sense. So there we go. We need to stay close to Jesus. And there's, how many questions are there? There are eight. There are eight questions to do. And then on the back, we've got a think box and it says, think, what fruits? which are good things you do for Jesus, could you ask God to give you? So that's something for you to think about. And then we've got a code to crack. And it says, crack the code to find this week's memory verse. But watch out, there's an extra phrase we didn't learn in the video. But we're learning six things that Jesus said about himself. And do you know, I've realised I forgot to put the Bible reference on there. So I'll tell you now. 
It's John chapter 15 and verse 5. But it is on the, um, on the pack for the younger children, so hopefully you can look it up. So there's a, an activity sheet for you to do as well. And it's really nice to see your pictures of the crafts that you've done. Now we're going to finish off by singing the new song that we learnt last week. And do you remember? It starts off by counting down from ten. And it's all about that place that God has prepared for us in heaven. So are you ready? Get your ten fingers ready. And your big voices because we're going to count down from ten until blast off. Are you ready? Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Blast off! Somewhere outside of space, God has prepared a place for those who trust him and obey. Jesus will come again, and though we don't know when, the countdown's getting lower every day. Ten and nine, eight and seven, six and five and four. Call upon the Saviour while you may. Three and two, coming through the clouds in bright array. The countdown's getting lower every day. Jesus was crucified, suffered and bled and died, but on the cross he did not stay. He made this promise true, I will come back for you. The countdown's getting lower every day. Ready to count down? Ten and nine, eight and seven, six and five and four. Call upon the Saviour while you may. Three and two, coming through the clouds in bright array. The countdown's getting lower every day. Soon will the trumpet sound and we'll rise off the ground. With Christ forever we will be. Children, where will you be throughout eternity? The countdown's getting lower every day. Ready to count down? Ten and nine, eight and seven, six and five and four. Call upon the Saviour while you may. Three and two, coming through the clouds in bright array. The countdown's getting lower every day. The countdown's getting lower every day. Very quietly. The countdown's getting lower every day. And that's a wonderful thing, that one day Jesus will come back. And we need to think about, like that last verse is, where we will be when Jesus comes back. Will he take us with him to be with him in heaven forever? because we're his friends and because we've asked Jesus to forgive us for our sins and the wrong things that we've done. And that's what we should be doing. We should be turning to Jesus and saying, Jesus, please forgive me for my sins and the wrong things that I've done. Make me your friend and help me to be joined up closely with you. So thank you very much for listening, boys and girls. And remember, there is no Saturday Club next week because I'm having a week off. So I will be back for Saturday Club the week after next, and I'll see you then. Bye-bye.